Amazing Grace, one of the most popular and recognizable song hymns of all time, and now you can play it on the guitar and sound great. Welcome back to Relax and Learn Guitar. I'm Kevin and this is Maggie May. My wife Vicki's behind the camera. Hello. Let's get going on this popular song. Over 200 years old, this song is definitely in the oldies, but it's one that everyone should learn how to play on the guitar, and it sounds great on the guitar. Um, obviously, this song can be played in so many different versions. I'm going to be using a capo on the third fret for this lesson. That's just to match my voice a little better. You can choose to use a capo or not, or move your capo around to where it suits you. But if you're going to play along with me for this lesson, you can use your capo on the third fret. And then stick around once we talk about the, the chords, a couple different variations, some strum patterns. We'll do a little playthrough at the very end and you guys can play along with me. So for this one, the chords we need to know are going to be a G, a D, a B minor, and we'll talk about that one, an E, and an A7. Now for that B minor chord, uh, definitely check out this lesson above. I've put together like the easiest way to learn how to play that B minor bar chord because we've seen uh, some of our uh, folks in our membership have some struggles with that one. It can be one that is, uh, it might not be as crazy as the uh, F bar chord, but the B minor chord is definitely one you can uh, practice and get better at. So check out that lesson when you're done with the song lesson. But uh, for those chords, for that B minor, if you're not playing bar chords yet, you can kind of do it this way and use your index finger on that first string, a second fret, your middle finger on the second string, a third fret, and then your ring and pinky on the fourth and third strings on the fourth fret. That's all relative to the capo. So you can't play it that way if you don't want to play the bar chord. And for the strum pattern for this song, we're going to start with a down, down, up, down, up. Down, down, up, down, up. Nice and easy. This is in three, four times. So it is kind of a waltz. It's more of a one, two, three, one, two, three. Not in kind of the most common 4-4 four, four time. So you have one and two and three and one and two and three and So work on that strum pattern first. And then for the chord progression for this one, the way I like to remember it, um, it does start on that uh, D chord. And the verse uh, starts on a D and it has two strum patterns for that D. Then we move to a G for one strum pattern, a D for one strum pattern, a B minor for one strum pattern, an E for one strum pattern, and then the A7 gets two strum patterns. I remember it this way, I kind of bookend it. The first chord of the verse is two patterns, the rest are one, and then again the last chord is two patterns. That's how I kind of remember it. So for a little spice to this one, uh, you can do for the intro, I like playing that D chord. Same pattern, down, down, up, down, up. I'm doing a, just a really slight little difference there. I am lifting up on that last up strum of the pattern. I'm lifting up my middle finger off of that first string. That makes a D sus two chord. There's a D, D sus two. So it's just a little, Not a half two, but a nice one. If you want to tackle that. It's like a mini hammer on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're kind of lifting up and hammering back down onto it. And that's just a little spice for the beginning of the song. And another little tip for this one is the last upstrum of this pattern. We're going to use that to change our chords a little quicker and smoother. So we're going, let's just say from that D, the next chord's a G. So here's a little tip for you. On the last upstrum, take all your fingers off all the strings because you're going to move them to the next chord shape. I just call this the new chord. So 
subtle, but it really makes a difference. That little split second gives you more time to change those chords. And that little, you can choose to use this little D sus 2 trick throughout the song if you like, or just in the intro, whatever you feel like. And another thing you can do if you want to have a little more advanced of a strum pattern, you can use a bass note for the first down strum. So there's just the down strum. You can play the bass note of the chord. For a little bit different effect. For that, you need to know the roots of those chords. The D is the fourth string. G is the sixth string. That B minor is a fifth string root. Unless you're playing it this way, then it becomes a fourth string root. E is a sixth string root. And the A7 is a fifth string root. I can't tell you how many times I sang this song as a kid in church. I mean, it's just a staple. And, uh, you know, my church, there weren't, there weren't guitars. It was pretty much like the piano and the organ player. But you can totally play this one on the guitar and sound good at it. So now it's time for you to relax and learn some guitar. Make sure you're in tune. Slap that capo on the third fret to play along with me. I will basically sing the chords mixed in with the words. And we'll start with that intro. Doing that D, I am going to play the... Uh, D sus2 on the last up strum. We'll do that like four times for the intro and then just do one verse. So here we go. Three, two, one. pick out the individual melody for this great song check out this lesson here which is another version but there's no strumming I'm just kind of picking out the melody and showing that to you guys but very cool to add that one on top of this one so check that out as always Vicki Maggie and I thank you for your reviews and your support here on YouTube and remember you're never too old to learn Take care.